one of the hardest things is like when you spend years working for someone else, right? You learn how to cook their food and part of your job working in the brigade is to cook their food to the best of your ability and to make sure that they believe it is the way that they would put it out. And something that if you're working for someone that you really enjoy that you should be proud of. Um, I'm fortunate that I worked for people that I really enjoyed. There's a lot of people that I fucking hated working for too. But um, finding your own voice within that. Finding who you are. Finding um, your purpose. Take some time. Yeah. And, and I, I experienced that hard. And it's like... Again, I, I go to the mental health thing when it comes to kitchens because, you know, like we're reviewed every day by a bunch of schmucks that could or could not know right what, what food is supposed to be like or what service is supposed to be like. And listen, there's plenty of people that actually know and could tell us that we're bad and that those are things that we have to fix. But I, I'd say that they're a small percentage of the 100%. Right. And, um, you know, so it depends how you how you decide to grow. Like for me... The first two years of area specific was very tough because I was trying to find my voice and I, I don't know if I really found it until year three. And then when I found it, I didn't just find it. I doubled down on it because we were very close to closing several times. And I said to myself, I was, you know, if we're going to do the thing, um, this is, has to be who we are. And if we're going to go down, this is how we're going to go down. Right, right. Um, but it was finding my voice. And what I think, like, the food and the city and the culture meant to me. And then trying to put that on a plate. And then not only just on a plate, in an experience all itself. Right. And that's why I'm, I don't believe in, like, the evil empire of Uber Eats. Um, because, I, you know, you can't box up an experience. You know, it, it's part of the thing of yeah. dining here, you know. And um, it was, I, I would say it was a hard up and down journey of, like, trying to figure out, like, who am I? And even now, I still evolve a lot now, you know. But the evolution at, at least has like a, it's got, it's grounded in something. It could reach a different technique or a different style, but it's still grounded in the same roots because I found them and I planted seeds yeah. and I said, this is who who is who I'm going to be. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, that's that's a. Uh, I mean, that's a big aspect in in uh, at least being a painter is. Uh, getting to that point where you're just being completely honest and dealing with a good point dealing with the consequence of like this is who I am and people might not like it but I mean this is who I am but getting to that point is is uh, is uh, is the most vulnerable place yeah, you could be for sure because it's like you know it's uh, it's almost it's being naked you know it's, it's this is everything you know and and will people connect with that that's a, an incredible point it's like um that vulnerability aspect yeah. it's, you know when you uh, when some random person let's just from whatever descent decides like i'm gonna open up a taco place mm. but they're just gonna open a taco place and they have like no connection to that that taco place or whatever right. it may be for them. It's just a business. Right. But when you consider yourself trying to do something, trying to express yourself, it's a very vulnerable place to be because there could be, and in the art world, I'm sure it's the same way. It's like you do this piece that you're so emotionally, physically, mentally invested in. And then someone could be like, well, I don't like that. Yeah. And I'll be like, and <laughs> I think the growth for me is when I started saying, I don't give a fuck. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't. Yeah. So, uh, there was a table the other day, and they didn't have a bad experience. They, uh, I just overheard them talking. And they are just like, you know, this place used to be, like, very different. And I heard them, you know, like, just because they were sitting at the table behind me while I was expediting. And just like, it's like, yeah, you know, there used to be, a, like, it was a little, uh, it, this is much more, like, elevated. Oh. And in my brain, I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, they had a great time. That that wasn't the point, but I guess just like really saying like not being scared of the fact that I wanted to elevate this food and who we were, because there was a, a moment of fear for me of elevating it because people wouldn't understand it. Right. And when you elevate it, you need to charge more for it because you're putting more time, effort, dollars into make into producing it. So 
it's a vulnerable feeling. Like, are they going to like it? Or are they not? And at, at one point, I was just like, fuck it, man. If you're going to do this shit, just fucking do it. Yeah, that's, that's I, I mean, that's like, that's like probably the most important part of getting to that core of whatever you're trying to create where that, that uh, magical thing happens. It's where you're vulnerable and you don't care as long as you're really content with, with the outcome. You ever seen the Kevin Costner movie For Love of the Game? No, I have not. <laughs> you haven't? No. It's a game about baseball, right? And he's like an old pitcher and he's pitching his last game. Okay. And he would always have this thing. It's like, you know, it's like the end of the game and he's starting to get tired and he could really hear the crowd. Right. And the crowd was starting to bear down on him, right? This is a great movie. You should watch yeah. it. Even if you don't like yeah. baseball, it's still a good movie. I mean, classic Costner here. I mean, it's good stuff. <laughs> And this isn't like Waterworld Kevin Costner, by the way. This is good <laughs> Kevin Costner. Um, and he used to just, like, right when he was about to pitch, he would say, clear the mechanism. And it was just like the whole – he would envision the enti- all the stands empty. It was like, I'm just going to throw the perfect pitch right now. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I said that a lot to myself when I was, like, going through this hard change. And it was like, I'm going to take this off the menu. And then, you know, even my business partner was like, well, people really like that. I'm like, but this is not who we are. And I'm going to take this off the menu. It's like, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, but I'm going to. And you shouldn't. And, and you know, like, as I, du- I got lucky, as I doubled down, more people came. And as I doubled down even more about, like, who I was and who the restaurant is, more people came. And I got lucky because it could have gone the other way. But at the same time, like, I, I w- if no one came. Like, I would still be proud of what I did there. Well, that's another thing. With experience, it's kind of like following your your uh, your inner gut because you're going to know. You're, in, you're, in, you're, you're here every day. You right. know. Right. And it's the same thing with painting where an experienced painter knows how to edit. Edit down. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Editing. Because, you know, when I was a kid, like, my paintings were kind of a bunch of colors all over the place. Sure. And then you kind of... You kind of learn how to edit down. That's such a difficult thing to do. Yeah. How to edit your own work. Elegance and simplicity. Yeah. And that's extremely, extremely difficult. Negative space. Yeah. You know, I, I, we talk about it. It's like less is more. There's power and absence. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. I, I mean, just like w- when creating a, like when creating a dish and then even just seeing it on paper, drawing it out all the components coming up with the rest recipes for all the components. I'll look at it and be like, so what can I take off of here? What is not necessary? I was asking Nick because I, you know, I often have, I know people that make food, they take a photo of it. It looks horrible. You have it. It tastes good. What was like the hardest thing for you to learn in your craft where Okay, it has to look amazing or very unique, not like someone else, how it tastes. Like, what are, like, the difficult parts of, of uh, creating, like, a, a piece of art with, like, uh, an entree? Or- there's layers to it. It's definitely like an onion, this whole, that, that question, because there's sev- several avenues you have to think of. There's something I think of often, and there's, I do this a lot. I'll come up with food that we can never actually put on the menu. Okay. Because it's too complicated. It's too difficult for them to execute. And for me, execution and consistency, no matter what, as a business owner, is the number one thing. Right? So the just talking about food on the plate itself, I'll think of several avenues. Okay. How do you eat this? When the guest – because you can't – you're not going to train the guest how to eat it. But you can anticipate movements. Right? So like – when they drop a plate, the protein needs to be to this side because the majority of the world is right-handed, right? They're going to pick up this and this, and then they're going to eat it that way. And then the sauce is going to be this way. So when they stroke this way, it's going to pick up sauce from here, right? Then it's like um, how long is the dish good for, right? So like there's certain dishes that after a minute in the window are trash, trash, right. not good. And I'll throw it back in the window and tell them to redo it. So there's that one, right? Then it's like, can we find a way to execute this dish 40 times in one night? And each, all 40 of them being to our standard, which our standard is through the roof. Can we do that? 
And if we can't, it's a good dish, but we'll not do it. Straight up. And then, above everything, is it fucking delicious? Right, right. All those, all those things are good. Is it hot? Is it consistent? Is the pickup X, Y, and Z? Does it have the standard things which you're looking for texture? You're looking for um, heat. You're looking for seasoning. You're looking for all those like classic things you look for. Is there bitter? Is there like uh, acid? All those things. But then at the end of the day, is it fucking delicious? Because the most beautiful food in the world, if it's not delicious, yeah. it's not good. And as far as presentation, when you're coming up with a, a new concept, like uh, how do you study it? Do you like do you take photos of it? Go home, look over it. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I draw everything out first. Yeah. Um, like my notebook is all just like there'll be a page there'll be three are. different avenues of like how we could plate this and sometimes I don't do any of those and as we're actually plating the dish I'll be like maybe this is better this way and this whatever you know like yeah, until you're in the moment you don't really know you can't capture what it's supposed to be like now when you put stuff on the menu obviously if it doesn't taste to your standard it won't go on the menu right but does that apply to presentation like if it's freaking delicious but you're like ah like do you does it have to have a certain i'll continue to fine tune it until i find a place that i find it beautiful okay yeah i mean for me like food is a story right and i feel like it's uh our story and i think that our story is beautiful so i want food to be that i think that there's certain triggers that people look for like you know every i think and every different situation there's like a fad or a niche like this is cool now like watermelon radishes were in forever because they're cute or like whatever you know finishing with this or finishing with that i try to go very opposite of those things and i try to say like what is what classically always works because the classics no matter what will never die right right that and and with food even more so like classic flavor combinations a lot of times when i come up with food I'll be reading a book that's from like the 40s and be like, oh yeah, that that herb with that sauce and that that spirit, like all that works in a sauce. And then, but what if I change that herb into a powder? And then what if we finish the fish with the powder? Or like, we just did like a, people had been pining for like a green salad. Oh, recently, and it was like I get it. You know, I understand it. Like right now, we're in peak season for local greens. Uh, we can get them from be heaven they're beautiful you know they're really dirty so you got to spend time cleaning them um so i get it but it's also making making a green salad beautiful is tough you know i think all the components in them are beautiful itself Mm -hmm. but actually making it something that's like striking is not always easy right yeah so we came up with a plate that's probably the most difficult plate to plate on the menu right now and just like we took the whole like bundle we season the whole bundle individually. We wrap it with a chive, a chive, so it stands. We cut the bottom so it stands. We do a lettuce puree, croutons that are made out of white beans wrapped with bocarones, and like, it's an impressive thing. And we finish it with bay leaf powder. Wow! And it's like this. I was, you know, we went through like three to four different platings, and then one of my chefs was like, you know, what if we did it like this old uh, French salad? And I said, oh man, that's that's genius. And I said, you know, let's. We did the wrap, and it's a pain in the ass, but, you know, that means that we'll only have 12 a night. Wow. And, that, and then if we only have 12 a night and we sell those 12, then we're out of those 12. That's just part of the thing, you yeah. know? It's even something as simple as a cheeseburger, right? Yeah, I was actually looking. I'm more of a meat and potatoes kind of guy, and I saw the – we were out here, and I saw the cheeseburger. I was like, man, that thing looks freaking delicious. Something as simple as, like, the chug burger. The buns are baked every day. The meat is ground every day. So we only have 12 a day. Wow. And if we don't, if, I mean, if we sell those 12, we sell those 12. Yeah, right. Wow. It's just like I'm trying to find the a happy medium. Yeah, I want absolutely. to make people happy, but at the same time, like, this is what I believe in. Yeah. So this is who I'm going to, this is what I'm going to stand by. Exactly. You know? So I think coming up, the the thought process of coming up with this could take months. I bet. Yeah. It legitimately could take months. Because yeah. of those different aspects. And then, honestly, we can go through all that, put it on the menu, and it could not work. Mm. And after a couple of days, I just take it off the menu. Wow. Yeah, I mean, with painting, it's, uh, you know, I think um, 
as I'm getting older, I, I feel like I feel like it's I'm making new American art. Interesting. What does that mean to you? Because it, I'm you know I'm American, but I'm first generation. Right. So I'm like being exposed to all these things that are are part of America, but I didn't really like my family doesn't know about you know like right. all the history of, of America. So it's like. Uh, uh, it's you know like I mean what's I mean what's more American than like a place where so many immigrants are coming here and, and being like seeing it all the time and, and and kind of being a part of it but not really but you know it's just always there and uh, I don't know I just feel like the work I make is just like a new American painting well I mean it's also very distinct to you in the time period yeah right? exactly I mean uh, art is very time period based yeah and uh you know, it's uh, I you know when I was younger, I would work on a painting for a really long time until I got it right, and now I, I've learned to abandon. So, if I'm working on a painting for more than five days, we got a problem. I want to be done. Like, I, oh, yeah. if I can't get it resolved in four or five days of working, then there's something wrong. Uh, so I, I do give myself uh, uh, time limits. Do you ever revisit? Uh, I used to a lot. I try not to as much, but yeah, I do. I do. Interesting. Actually, one of your paintings, I think I just touched it up a little bit. There was something I wanted to fix. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I, 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 I revisit, but I do minor revisions. Yeah. Yeah. Before I would like start and then it end up being something else. And right. I try I mean, not to, I only do that if I, I can't stand the painting and I just want to create a new painting. Then I'll, I'll just paint over the whole thing. Uh, so I guess it is that, but, um, more or less, I just want to get rid of what was there. Yeah. It was her idea to wrap the chive around the salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's another thing about painting. It's very, you know, I, with you, I imagine you come up with stuff, but then it's a collaboration. And then you... you, you well, every room is different, right? So I think... Uh, we have an incredible amount of talented people within our, our company. And, um, you know, it definitely is collaborative. Uh, I can sit in a room and I say, listen, I have this idea. And then, the, you know, uh, Chef Ashley, Manny, Cher, the whole team. be like, well, what if you add this? What if you change that to that? And then, you know, we have a back and forth a lot about it. Because at the end of the day, um, they, they are definitely the ones that are, are putting in the work right now. Right, right. You know, so I want them to feel ownership of the whole thing, you know, and I think it's I think it's like one of those things that the more they feel ownership over, the more proud they are. Yeah, right. And it's something I didn't experience as a young cook, and right. I wish I would have right. um, until I started working for Norman, and Norman was like, yeah, I mean, listen, um, come up with stuff. We'll try it. And, and that's when... I think the door opened up for me to understand what creating was. Yeah. That's really important, I think. Yeah. Like coming up, like being young and ambitious, it's like people would just like slam the door on my face, wouldn't like explain anything to me. Yeah. yeah. And then like now, if like, you know, like a young whippersnapper comes up to me, I'm like, yeah, like I'll share whatever I nurture talent, man. Yeah. Like share, like, hey, why don't you think about this? So when people reach out, like, hey, I need advice. I'll be like the first to give it sure. because I feel like uh, sometimes I didn't necessarily get it. I had to get it by like really grinding my teeth, you know, yeah. and like really, really just like pulling it out of people. Yeah. I hated that too. Yeah. I didn't like it. I, I really, I, and I think it's to like a, a, a rough extent for me because if people ask for advice, I'm, I'm like, all right, cool. What time do you want to talk? Yeah, I'll calendar, awesome, yeah. I'll calendar an invite. We'll sit on a call. We'll like. What do you need? Yeah. You want to talk about yeah. leases? You want to talk about real estate? You want to talk about food costs? You want to talk about how to, you know, coach a team? Like, I'm, I'm there for all of it, you know? Yeah. And it's only because so many times for me, no one gave a fuck. Yeah, exactly. No one wanted to coach but me. I think that how, – how old are you? 35. I think it's because of, like, the time we grew up. Fuck off, huh? I see that face. 35-year-old fuck. Yeah, whatever. I think it was a time of, like, when we grew up. Maybe it was just – Maybe Miami was a little underdeveloped, and I don't know. I, I don't. I, I mean, I have a lot of people I look up to, but I feel like there were certain things that I really just had to learn, and I feel like I had to be abrasive when I didn't want to be, or like brash when I, you know, I didn't want to be. Yeah. But like you, you have to because 
you know, it's, it's hard, you know. Yeah, you got to be rough, man. Yeah. You got to be rough sometimes. It takes a lot of a grit and, and grinding to get to a certain level that you want to be at. Yeah.